Sound is all around us, everywhere. It beats at our eardrums until much of the time we're hardly conscious of it. But on this particular Saturday morning, Jimmy Foster suddenly became very conscious of it because a sound made him jump. Or was it really the sound that made him jump? It seemed as though the post was vibrating. Well, he'd soon find out whether there was a vibration along with the sound. Before the familiar telegraph key came this first Morse instrument, whose spark set fire to the world of communication. Sure, Western Union was boots and saddles, the golden spike in the railroad tie, singing wires. by a membrane shaped like a spiral ramp. This membrane is of a highly complicated internal construction and when agitated by sound waves, sends out nerve impulses. These are conducted to the brain by nerves which unite to form the main auditory nerve leading to the auditory center. When the fork is struck, its prongs begin to vibrate. These vibrations set up invisible waves in the surrounding air. We can picture these waves as animated drawings. Striking the prongs distorts them. Like other solid objects, these prongs resist distortion. They spring back and forth, thus producing new distortions. Each movement or vibration sets up new disturbance or sound wave impulse. These continue as long as the prongs are in motion. Which sound waves move depends upon the medium to which they pass. We will assume that these waves are being transmitted by air molecules. Every time the prongs move apart, they push against the adjacent air. In turn, this movement affects the air further on. In this segment of the wave, we can see that some molecules are pushed relatively close together. These represent condensations of air. Each time the prongs spring inward, a partial pack forms in their vicinity. Air molecules nearby. 
nearby move into this vacuum. seen a demonstration of a bell under a glass jar? With normal air inside the jar, you could hear the bell clearly. But when the vacuum pump drew the air out of the jar, there was nothing inside to carry the vibrations of the bell. Nothing until the air was let back into the jar. So you need air for sound to travel through? Well, you need something, but it doesn't have to be air. Here, I'll show you. We'll use a microphone, which is a sort of mechanical ear. Now, it picks up sound vibrations and changes them into electrical impulses. These go through the amplifier to the speaker, which changes them back into sound vibrations. Now, the sound of my voice travels to the microphone through air, doesn't it? I guess so. Sure. Well, sound actually travels better and faster through solid things. Iron or aluminum or glass. Here, hold the microphone over here. Now, what do you hear? Nothing. And neither does the microphone, or we'd hear it from the speaker. Now, I'll hold my watch up against the aquarium. You hold the microphone against your end. Now I hear it. That's because sound travels better through the glass than it does through air. Now, since the watch is waterproof... I guess that proves the sound also travels better through water. That's right. And speaking of water, it can also show us how sound travels. Toss 
a rock in a pool and watch how the ripples start from the splash and travel out. And if there's something floating on the surface, you'll see that it's the disturbance that moves. 